The other entrance, which is in Coronation Street, this is leading to the exhibition halls and the Empress Ballroom. There's the Pineapple Jack, well known to the theatre bar. This would have had palms, it would have had musicians, it would have had dancing, it would have had singing, and each different hall would have had an entertainment that you would then go and see. So it's two shilling entrance and then you were him for the day. Interestingly, Winter Gardens was one of the first places in Blackpool that had ladies' toilets. <laughs> ladies' toilets was a big thing in the 1870s because it freed women from actually being able to go in out. So Winter Gardens and department stores were the first places for ladies' toilets. It's one of those bizarre things of social history that makes a difference to your daily life. <laughs>
Gardens opened in 1878. There was a bronze fountain in the middle, or, or where you actually see, and there was plaster work by a man called Bruciani all the way on the different alcoves. Some of those plaster work is still in the building. So this part here actually brings together all of the three phases I mentioned: the 1870s, the 1890s, and the 1930s. So the faience that you can see, the blue and white faience, is from the 1930s stage. But those pillars. of entertainment and educational purposes. It was all part of the Victorian idea of what they call rational recreation, that entertainment should be about education. Duncan is... The, well, duty manager, but usually the technical, manager. technical manager of the Winter Garden. So he's done all that. He did the Royal Variety Show here. 
It was just saying about the techniques and the hydraulics and how many flies yeah. there are. Yeah. This theatre will take any musical show, any you know, musicals in London, any show will fit in here, no problem, very easy. It's got the biggest flying system in the country. Every four inches is a flying bar. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, four take, inches. Yeah. So you, if you want a flying bar, wherever you want, it's there. It's also on the promenade. Oh. Blackpool, between, 18, between 1870s to 1890s. A prolification of theatres grew up in Blackpool, over 20 different theatres. At its height in the 1900s, it had a seating capacity of every seating of 25,000 theatre seats, a seating. So in the day, in the, in the season, that's 50,000 a day. So the Opera House is 3,000. The Winter Gardens capacity as a whole as a venue is 16,000. The Grand Theatre is 1,000. The Tower Circus is 6,000. The Palace was 8,000. Feldman's was 1,000. There was many other theatres in Blackpool, the Alhambra, the ABC, all of them, the Hippodrome. But the three main ones that survive in the Winter Gardens in terms of theatre is this, the Opera House and the Pavilion Theatre, the Grand Theatre on the, on the round the corner, which is also much more theatre. The second Opera House, in 1911, was designed by Magdalene Littlewood, who also did the Winter Gardens in Morecambe and also did the, the Empress Ballroom. Uh, and parts of that were retained in the original, in the structure of the third Opera House, which opened in 1911. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what they are. Dancing. vandalisation or improvements to the building, I'd like to see it as the former. But what of the things they did do, they actually just encased it. But in the 1980s, when her first leisure took over, they decided to modernise it by changing the colour. And this is what I call kind of Macintosh. It's supposed to look like many Macintosh, but it's actually this horrible colour. It's never this colour, but it was this beautiful russet and gold and greens and that. Um, but it's still there. They haven't actually, what they did do, which was really good, they didn't actually take away the fabric of the building other than one uh, major room. But as you can see, uh, it's still quite amazing. These original light fittings, all the original plaster, over the winter gardens. And there's a very good book by about 100 people on the company. Of a lesson you may remember when the television was the ship's wheel. <laughs> It's actually called Atmospheric Architecture. It's supposed to be the exterior interior in. It's an American form of architecture associated with picture colours in the 1920s. So in America and in North America and Canada, a lot of the picture houses were based on this idea of a picture colour picture house. And that's what they were doing. And it's still there. It's still there. And it's still there. Craftsman, art director, and worked as the art director for Boris Elby and Alfred Hitchcock. And did some of the greatest British side of 